We've had several people ask, oh, what's it take to change the width and the depth on the vector? Uh, the RNET and the VR2 version both use the same power base and the same seat, so changing either one of them is identical. The first step is to remove the plastic shroud on the back of the seat. You'll notice there are two Phillips screws on the sides and two on the bottom. After you remove the shroud, pull on both sides of the canvas that is attached with Velcro to the back of the seat and expose the six nuts on the back. You may have to hold the Velcro strap that is taped to the back in place while separating the Velcro. Sometimes the Velcro holds a little too well. Next we are going to remove the center back plate. There are six three millimeter Allen screws with eight millimeter nuts on the back that hold the back plate in place. These bolts need to be completely removed. You can then remove the center back plate. At this point, it is probably still held on by the Velcro strips. Just peel back the Velcro strips from the side panels enough to remove the back center panel. Leave the Velcro strips hanging from the back panel as they will be used again once the back panel is reinstalled. You can see that there are six sets of two holes on the back panel. The outside holes will be the ones normally used for the 16, 18, 20, and 22 inch widths. Going to the inside holes would decrease the available width by one inch, changing them to 17, 19, and 21 for those rare cases where those might be needed. It cannot be reduced to 15 inch due to other frame restrictions in the seat back and seat base. The next thing you'll want to do is loosen but do not remove the six three millimeter seat pan screws. Next, on both sides of the seat back on the base, loosen but do not remove two 4mm Allen screws with 10mm nuts as shown. This will make the frame a little less rigid and give us a little wiggle room while we're trying to maneuver the sections to place the screws in their proper place a little later on. Now remove the two 10mm nuts and curved washers from the lower seat back. Next, we're going to move the foam grips on the handles down and out of the way of the bolts on the top of the rear of the seat. If you have the soft foam covers, it will be necessary to inflate them with an air pressure nozzle to loosen them so that they will move easier without damaging them. If you have the foam covers with the slots in them, the bolts will be accessible without moving the foam. Please note at this point we will only be doing one side at a time to maintain stability to make it easier to adjust. Now we're going to remove the two 4mm Allen screws which were under the foam from the right side of the handle. There is one screw in the front and one in the back. Next we're going to remove the 4mm Allen screw and washers from the lower seat back on the right side. Now we're going to remove the two 5mm Allen screws from under the seat on the right side. One in the front and one in the back. This is a shot from under the frame with the seat pan removed to give you a better idea of where the bolts are. At this point the seat frame will slide when you have the bolts removed. That is how we adjust the width of the seat. It is a tight fit so it will not slide easily. We will assume for demonstration purposes that we are adjusting the width to make it 20 inches wide. You do not need to completely remove the side frame to adjust it. The side frame has been removed here to show you the positioning of the holes. In this picture we are actually looking at the left side frame. You will see on the picture there are nine holes totaled, starting closest to the outside, the 16 inch, 17 inch, then 18 inch, 19 inch, 20 inch, 21 inch and 22 inch holes. There are two additional holes that are not used. In this case the 20 inch hole has been highlighted to show you where it should go. Using a rubber mallet tap the right side to position it at the desired width holes. Move the handle bottom of the seat back, back of the seat base and front of the seat base at the same time to keep them even and keep them from binding. I wouldn't get too involved at this point getting it perfect because you'll be moving the rest of the frame to align other bolts first. 
so it may move a little. Let's take a look at the holes in the handle next as that is where we'll be installing the first two screws. There are four holes in the middle bar on each side and two holes on the outside handle bars. For all even number widths we'll be using the hole in the outside bar closest to the end. On the middle bar starting from the middle we have the 16 inch hole, then the 18 inch hole, then the 20 inch hole, and finally the 22 inch hole. We replace the two 4 millimeter Allen screws in the handle first. For this particular case we'll be putting them on the third hole out from the center on the middle bar and using the end hole on the outside bar for the 20 inch measurement. Next we'll do the lower back. Again it's pretty much the same as the top of the seat handles. There are four holes on each side of the center bar and two on the outside bars. We'll be going to the 20 inch hole or the third hole out from the center and the hole closest to the end on the outside frame. Adjust the lower back to align to the proper holes and install the 4 millimeter Allen bolt washer and 10 millimeter nut. Now we'll adjust the underneath of the seat base in the rear to align the proper hole and install the 5 millimeter Allen screw. Now we're going to adjust the front and do the same thing in the same hole. At this point you will repeat all the steps that we did for the right side here for the left side. Now we're going to install the seat back. You'll see the holes for the 16 inch, the 18 inch, the 20 inch, and the 22 inch seat widths. We will be using the six outside holes on the center plate for the even seat widths. The six inside holes would be used for the odd number of seat widths. In this case, we would use a second set of holes from the inside on the outer seat plates. Reinstall the six 3mm screws and 8mm nuts and tighten them. Next, you tighten down the six seat pan screws. If you are not changing the seat depth, tighten down the four 4 mm Allen screws on both sides and 10 mm nuts that are holding them. If the seat depth is to be adjusted, remove the 4, four mm Allen screws on both sides and move the seat to position it at the desired holes. You can see in this picture there are 11 holes half inch apart in the back of the seat base frame. For the normal seat depths, the 16 inch, 17 inch, 18 inch, 19 inch, and 20 inch, the holes indicated will be used. In this example we are searching for the 20 inch holes. Here it would be mounted in the last hole and the third from the last hole as shown in this picture. Move the bracket to the appropriate holes and install the two 4 mm Allen screws and 10 mm nuts on each side and tighten them. Anytime the depth adjustment is made you should loosen the 5 mm screw on the bottom of each armrest receptacle and slide it so the armrest support is at a 90 degree angle to the armrest. Tighten the screw and repeat on the other side. Now go back up and move the foam handle covering over the top of the handle screws if the slotted covering was not used. When you change the seat width it's necessary to remove the old canvas and put the new size canvas in there. In order to do that need to remove the headrest clamp from the back of the center plate of the seat. Take the bracket, place it through the hole in the canvas and reinstall the headrest bracket. Replace the back canvas on the velcro on the seat back. Reinstall the back plastic shroud replacing the two screws on the sides and the two screws at the bottom of the shroud. Congratulations, you have just changed the width and depth of the seat. We do have exploded drawings of all this, so if you'd like a copy of them, just send either Rohan or me an email, and I can send them to you in your email. Rohan's email address is rsmith.marriageusa.com, and my email address is dcrossstreet.marriageusa.com. We're going to have another webinar, Avid Part Do, in June, which will cover more of the VR2 version and also go deeper into the RNET version. We also have a webinar in April that will cover the Lynx control system 
that we're using on the P326 Vision Sport and the P322 Vision CF. So be sure to come back for those.